Hello and welcome dear students. Today we will be discussing about the concept of typification and type method. We will also discuss different kinds of types used for scientific naming of organisms. Scientists identify new organisms and determine how to place them into an existing classification scheme. The first and the foremost important thing in this regard is to apply a proper name to each distinctive type of organism which is universally accepted. A botanical name by itself is only a phrase of one or three words. For a name to be meaningful, it is necessary to be sure what it applies to. The names of different taxa are based on the type method by which it is meant that a certain representative of a group is the source of the name for that group. This representative is called nomenclatural type. Describing species and infraspecific taxa and determining type specimens for them is part of scientific nomenclature. The type need not be the most typical member of that group to which it belongs. It only fixes the name of a particular taxon and the two are permanently associated. Hence, a type or typus is that constituent element of a taxon to which the name of the taxon is permanently attached whether as a correct name or a synonym. According to principle 2 of the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, the application of names of taxonomic groups is determined by means of nomenclatural types and the correct name of a taxon is based on circumscription, position and rank. It means that scientific names must be associated with some physical entity and nomenclatural type. A nomenclatural type anchors the meaning of the name if there is an argument as to what kind of plant the author meant by a particular name one examines the type specimen. A nomenclatural type is generally a specimen, for example, a standard herbarium sheet, a real plant or one or more parts of a plant or a collection of small plants dead and kept safe in a herbarium. The type need not always be a herbarium specimen sheet or a plant, a detailed drawing, painting, etc depicting the plant can also act as type for the set taxon. An illustration can also be designated as a type in situations where a dried plant was difficult to transport and hard to keep, safe for the future. Or the specimen of the early days of botany which has since been lost or damaged. A detailed picture of something that can be seen only through a microscope can also be considered a type because a tiny plant on a microscopic slide makes for a poor type. The microscopic slide may be lost or damaged or it may be very difficult to find the plant in question among whatever else is on the microscopic slide. An illustration in such cases make for a much more reliable type. Now we see the process of typification. Adherence to the type principle did not become mandatory until 1958. Prior to that time when taxonomists published a new name, they simply listed several different specimens that exemplified what they meant by the name. Without identifying any particular specimen as the top dog among the examples. From 1958 onwards, however, the designation of type specimen became mandatory Though still it was not fully explicit, it was enough to specify only few details about a type specimen such as collector's name, collector's number, place and date of collection. However, the problem was that if a collector made several collections with several duplicates of which everyone could be a type and if these duplicates turn out to be new species or subspecies extra. To resolve this problem, the process of typification was made more explicit since 1990 and it has been necessitated to identify the exact specimen 
that is to be nomenclature type of that taxon and the herbarium in which that particular specimen is deposited and if possible the accession number of the specimen should be specified as well. Now, we come to type method. When identifying material, a taxonomist attempt to apply a taxon name to a specimen or a group of specimens based on number one, his or her understanding of the relevant taxa, number second, having read the type descriptions and examination of all the type materials of that relevant taxa. If there are more than one name or type specimens that all appear to be same taxon, then the oldest name takes precedence and is considered to be the correct name for the material in hand. If on the other hand, the taxon appears never to have been named at all, then the scientist or another qualified expert picks a type specimen and publishes a new name and an official description. In case of Pinus Grigi, the name of the taxon was published in Prodromus Systematis Naturalis Vegetables in 1868 by A. P. D. Candole, without citing a holotype described from the collections of Josiah Gregg, who collected it in 1848, with collection number 402 from Mexico. The lectotype was later on designated by Farjan A. K. and B. T. Stiles from type protologue and published in Flora Neotropica in 1997 as valid name. The same situation is with most of the Linian plant names because Linnaeus and his contemporaries had no concept of nomenclatural type. It is the effort of later Texan masters trying to fix the application of linear names that have resulted in the typification of linear species. Although in reality, biologists may examine many specimens of a new taxon before writing an official species description, nonetheless under the formal rules for naming species, a single type must be designated as part of the published description. A type description must include a diagnosis, typically a discussion of similarities to and differences from closely related species and an indication of where the type specimen or specimens are deposited for examination. The geographical locations where a type specimen were originally found is known as its type locality. In the case of parasites, the term type host or symbiotype is used to indicate the host organism from which the type specimen was obtained. It should be noted that a type fix only a name to a single representative of the taxon. A type does not determine the circumscription of the taxon, therefore a taxon is independent of its type species or specimen. For example, the common dandelion is a controversial taxon. Some botanists consider it to consist of over a hundred small species, although most botanists regard it to be a single species. The type of the name Terexicum officinale is the same whether the circumscription of the species includes all those small species or whether the circumscription is limited to only one small species among the others. In this case, the name Terexicum officinale is the same and the type of the name is the same, but the extent of what the name actually applies to varies greatly. Normally, we think of types as referring to names of species or infraspecific taxa. However, Type specimens may serve as reference for the names of higher taxonomic ranks as well. For example, the type specimen for a genus name is the same of one of the species within that genus that was published first. The type specimen for a family name is the same as the one for the genus within the family that was published first. The International Code of Botanical Nomenclature 
has devised certain guidelines for proper use of typification, which are only a species or an infraspecific taxon can have a type of its own. Number second, a genus has the same type as that of one of its species and number third, a family has the same type as that of one of its genera. Now, we will discuss about classification of type specimens. The International Code of Botanical Nomenclature recognizes several kinds of nomenclature types, the most important of which is the holotype. The other types are isotype, syntype, paratype, lectotype, neotype and epitype. Now, we will discuss these types one by one. Holotype. A holotype is the single physical example, single specimen or a group of small individuals on a single herbarium sheet or illustration extra of an organism upon which a name is based, originally used or designated at the time of publication of the name of the taxon. It serves as the definitive reference source for any question of identity or nomenclature. It is recommended that a holotype be deposited in an internationally recognized herbarium and cited as one of the criteria for the valid publication of a name. Holotype constitute the most valuable of specimens and are kept under good hands in a recognized herbarium. For example, Begonia incana is a species name based on the holotype collected by Lindley in 1843 and the specimen is deposited in Cambridge University Herbarium. Similarly, the name Arrhachis glandulifera is based on the holotype specimen collected by H.D. Stalker in 1990 and the herbarium sheet of the said specimen is deposited in herbarium of North Carolina State University. In the absence of holotype, for example, if it was lost or got damaged, another type may be selected out of the range of different kinds of types, depending on the case. Now, we come to second type of type that is called isotype. An isotype is a duplicate specimen of the holotype collected at the same time by the same person from the same population. If several branches of a tree are collected at same time, one specimen acts as a holotype and the remaining as isotypes. Isotypes are valuable in that they are liable duplicates of the same taxon and may be distributed to numerous other herbaria to make it easier for taxonomists of various regions to obtain a specimen of the new taxon. For example, the specimen shown has been selected by Stalker as an isotype for Arrhachis glandulifera with accession number 30091, for which he has also designated holotype. Both the holotype and the isotype with accession number the same have been deposited in herbarium of North Carolina State University. Now, we come to syntype. A syntype is a term used to indicate specimens with a special status and they belong to the original collection and from among which a lectotype is designated. In other words, a syntype is each specimen of a type series from which neither a holotype nor a lectotype has been designated. The syntypes collectively constitute the name bearing types. ICBN describes a syntype as any specimen cited in the protologue when no holotype was designated or any one of the two or more specimens simultaneously designated as types. Often word co-type is also used synonymously with syntypes, a term no longer recognized in the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Now, we will discuss lectotypes. A lectotype is a specimen that is selected from the original material to serve as a type when either no holotype was designated at the time of publication 
or if the holotype is missing or if the original type consisted of more than one specimen or taxon. It is a kind of nomenclature type. In other words, when a species was originally described on the basis of multiple specimens, one of those may be designated as a lectotype. It means that a lectotype is the single specimen selected from among syntypes to serve as only name bearing type specimen and is formally designated as such. For example, the name Aurobanki Shulzi was given by Mutil in Flora of France in 1835 with a description without citing the exact specimen as a type material. The name was later changed by Pommel as Philippinchi Schulze in 1874. However, Pommel based this name on the description of Mutil without citing the type. The name was later typified from Mutil's collection by Michael Foley in 2001 by a lectotype selected from Mutil's herbarium as one of the four specimens pasted on a herbarium sheet. Now we discuss about paratype. Any additional specimen other than the holotype listed in the type series in the original description is called a paratype. Paratypes are not name bearing types. In systematic botany, a paratype is defined by the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature as a specimen cited in the protologue that is neither the holotype nor an isotype nor one of the syntypes. Under this definition, paratypes are not necessarily explicitly identified as such in the original description. Paratypes are useful in that they allow subsequent botanists to know what collections were examined by the original author and considered part of the same taxon in preparing the description of a new taxon, particularly when the holotype and isotypes may be unavailable, of poor quality or lacking in certain details. Now, we come to neotypes. A neotype is a second class of specimens belonging to non-original collections that is selected to serve as the type when all of the material on which the name was originally based is missing or absent. For example, the type collections for the name Asculus sylvatica representing a neotype was collected by Hardin in absence of Bartman's collections who first proposed the name with description only. The specimen has been deposited in herbarium of the University of Michigan. Now, we come to another type called epitype. Epitype is a specimen or illustration that is selected to serve as a type if the holotype, lectotype or neotype is ambiguous with respect to the identification and diagnosis of the taxon. Article 9.7 of ICBN mentions a potential problem in typification when a type specimen for a variety of reasons no longer bears structures essential to the correct identification of the organism while still bearing other non-essential structures. For example, flowers without stamens, fungi, basidio without hymenium, etc. It can no longer serve as a type. But Article 9.7 make provision by designation of an epitype. An epitype is especially useful when the holotype or lectotype is an illustration from which microscopic characters cannot be seen. Besides already discussed, some other kinds of types have also been proposed from time to time, but they are not formally recognized in the ICBN. Some of these include Paratelectotype, which is any additional specimen from among a set of syntypes after a lectotype has been designated from among them. These are not name bearing types. The specimen shown depicts photograph of paralectotype specimen for the name Prunus persica, variety Nusi persica. 
which is preserved in the herbarium of North Carolina State University under accession number 125273. Another such type is Hepento type. A special case in protistans where the type consists of two or more specimens of directly related individuals representing distinct stages in the life cycle. These are collectively treated as a single entity and lectotype cannot be designated from among them. Several other permutations and variations in terms using the suffix type have been used, for example, allotype, cotype, topotype, genritype, isoneotype, etc., but these are not formally regulated by the codes and are usually obsolete. Now, we discuss about type species. Type species is a species within a genus with which the name of the genus is associated. Each genus must have a designated type species. The description of a genus is usually based primarily on its type species modified and expanded by the features of other included species. The generic name is permanently associated with the name bearing type of its type species. For example, the type species of genus Aster is Aster amelis and genus Poa is Poa pratensis. If the type species proves upon closer examination to belong to a pre-existing genus, then all of the constituent species must be either moved into a pre-existing genus or disassociated from the original type species and given a new generic name. The old generic name passes into synonymy and is abandoned unless there is a pressing need to make an exception. Now, we discuss about type genus. A type genus is that genus from which the name of the family or subfamily is formed. As with the type species, the type genus is not necessarily the most representative, but is usually the earliest described, largest or the best known genus. It is not uncommon for the name of a family to be based upon the name of a type genus that has passed into synonymy. The family name does not need to be changed in such a situation. For example, the family Articaceae has Artica as its type genus. When this original Articaceae family was split into number of smaller natural families, the name Articaceae was retained for the group containing the genus Artica, since the two <coughs> cannot be separated. The other separated groups with family rank got the names as Moresi, Almesi and Cannabinesi. Within the type genera Morus, Almus and Cannabis respectively. Now, we highlight some uses of types. Type specimens act as repository of information for the correct identification and naming of organisms. The process of typification is crucial to the science of biological taxonomy people's ideas of how living things should be grouped change and shifts over time. How do we know that what we call Nilumbo Nucifera is the same thing or approximately the same thing as what they will be calling Nilumbo Nucifera in two hundreds of years time? It is possible to check this because there would be a particular Nilumbium specimen preserved in a herbarium somewhere and everyone who uses that name, no matter what else they may mean by it, will mean that particular specimen. Some of the most precious holdings of major natural history museums around the world are rarely if ever displayed to the public. These are the collections of type specimens which by edict so as the last court of appeal in all questions and disputes about species, definition, membership and names etc. Zoological collections are maintained by universities and museums, ensuring that types are kept in good conditions and made available for examination by taxonomists are two important functions of such collections. 
Dear students, in our today's lecture, we discussed the concept of type specimens and the process of typification. We also discussed different kinds of types used in the correct nomenclature and classification of organisms. I hope that this lecture will make you understand how to differentiate different kinds of types. Thank you very much. Have a good day.